All right, I'm now recording our meeting so we can all watch it later. Well, it's almost time. And I'd like to start by welcoming everyone to Shea Spiritual Insights. You make it possible. You bring the questions and we try to answer them. I do want to uh, remind people that uh, oftentimes in the shared setting like this, the answers from your guides are going to be those that are appropriate uh, for the group, but that you will receive more detailed information energetically. And with that, the one thing I'd like to talk about that came up during last month's uh, meditation, our monthly meditation, and I saw it when I was in Kalispell at, at the healing path, was at the end, they showed me this double, I don't know how it's kind of a, a double wave of energy coming in. And it's part of the continuing ongoing energies that are raising the frequency of the planet higher and higher. And this is the next wave. And it looks like it was going to come in in the beginning of September. Now it's shifted out a little ways, or I guess it's from your point of view, that direction, um, outward further into September, although the beginning is, beginnings of it have already started. Um, and what this does is the energies come in, um, not only individually, but for the soul group, if we're ready for it, what happens is we just flow with it. I'm going to use my uh, mentor June's analogy of riding that, that, that wave like they do the surfers do in Hawaii. You're riding the wave and you're just being flowing with it and you just get set gently onto the beach. If we're not ready for it, if we're holding on to old patterns, old energetic things, maybe in fear, what it does is those, those energies come in, um, we get affected by the negative energies that we're holding on to or the lesser energies. And what came through earlier to mention before we started was the Buddhist talk about there's the two aspects of Buddha. I'm, I'm going to talk about the primarily two. There's the peaceful aspect. And the peaceful aspect of Buddha shows up when we're ready for whatever's coming in. The energies are coming in. Again, we're flowing with it. We're riding that crest of the wave and all is well. We're letting things disconnect as they should, and we're reconnecting to the new things uh, appropriately to the higher etheric realms and making those connections and flowing with it. And our life, of course, unfolds in the new ways that are appropriate for us. Then I think it's the, um, oh, I just had it, the uh, aspect of the Buddha. It's called the wrathful one. It's the one with the, sp um, the, the, uh, with the sword. And this happens when we are closed up. We're not going with the flow. And what happens is the sword, sword separate this from that. And what it can be kind of a rough ride when that aspect of the Buddha shows up, in which it's just the same analogy, just a different way. Basically saying that when we're ready for it, and we're flowing, the peaceful Buddha shows up. When we're not flowing with it, the other one comes in to cut us away from the old ego, the old pattern, so that we can flow into the higher patterns. So that was one thing that they wanted me to talk about again, uh, this time in the month, in the, um, this month's Shay's Insights. So with that, welcome everyone. We have Susan for the first time. It's just welcome. We're so happy you're here. Kathy, and you have a, a still picture down there as well. Is that, oh, you're muted. That's all right. Oh, that's Dan. All right. We have Dan. Um, as Kathy and Kathy, this is great. Lisa, welcome. Lisa Flores, Paula, and it looks like Marcy is with us. Wow, and Pat. So who, anyone would like to start? And since Susan's first time, how about, do you have any questions, Susan? Go ahead and unmute. Okay, can you hear me? I can. Can everyone oh. hear her? Everybody shake your head. All right. So it looks like we're good. <laughs> no, I don't really have any questions. I'm just participating today and, and listening to everyone. Uh, no, well, not, not yet, anyway. Well, do you have anything to share? Not going to put you on the spot if you don't. That's fine. Um, just thought if you had something to share that everyone would like to hear, that would be wonderful. No, it just feels to me like uh, 
you know, we've certainly pre passed that tipping point, but there's, there's still a lot of chaos right now. There is. Um, yeah. And it's very, I'm very uh, grateful to be aware of that because otherwise, you know, a lot of people would just be stepping into fear and continuing to do that if they didn't understand that. Yes, and I'm so glad you mentioned that because, because we do know what the process is, that these incoming energies are raising us higher. And just like can happen to us individually, we just talked about a moment ago, our low self, ego, old patterns can want to hold on. And as long as we know that that's what's happening, we can let go of it. But if we don't know what's happening, um, people can go into fear and then um, and it can be kind of a rough ride, a few bumps in the road, to say the least. So thank you for bringing that up, Susan. Mm -hmm. And Franny has just joined us as well. All right, who would like to go next? Pa uh, how about you, Paula? You're in the middle of my screen. How about you? Do you have any thoughts or any questions? I, I do, and thank you so much. I'm so happy to see everybody and hear their voices. Um, I'm wondering with what you just brought up, I've been feeling very, and I was trying to find the right word. It isn't uninterested. It almost feels like more disattached um, every day. And I believe I'm riding the, 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 you know, the wave at the top, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering if, if I'm reading that situation correctly. I'm just, I'm just doing each day as it comes and I'm not feeling real worried about anything, but I'm just feeling a little less than exuberant, I guess would be the question. Well, there's a couple reasons for you. And it's funny you say that because your high self was talking with me yesterday. Um, was just kind of, I just felt like was sharing some an update. And there's a couple of things happening with you and they're all, they're all wonderful. And I'll talk, the first thing is, is that you're growing in your personal growth. The, the, the wise woman, um, per, you know, I gotta say persona, but that aspect of you that you're growing into. And as you're growing, and that personal growth is happening where you're making connections and integrating that and you and we somewhat detach from other things so that, that process can happen so it's somewhat natural to, just because of what's going on personally with you in your own spiritual growth additionally i say at the outer rings i don't want to get stay in the picture here you're detaching because your higher guidance, as with many of us, is keeping you disconnected from those things that are not part of what your life is about so that you can stay focused on what is. So saying that you are detached is a double thing. One, your own personal growth, and two, is part of your higher guidance, your guides, the divine, keeping you detached from those things, those energies out there that are not part of what you should be doing and are doing. Wonderful, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's go to Lisa. Do you have anything to share? Any thoughts? Um, any questions? Um, yes, I do, Jeff. Um, my question would be, so I guess I just want to kind of check in with, I know I've been releasing a lot of lifetime stuff, traumas and things, and mm -hmm. even having physical stuff with that manifest. And back in March, when we had the, I was over in Montana with you guys, and we had that meditation, and I was seeing this new platform. I'm just curious, like, am I close there yet? Is it still a ways out? Is there a lot more to be released before I get there? Well, right now, you are getting there. You are moving toward that direction. And yes, there's more being released. It's just part of what was there. I'd say another, just uh, say another layer. It's just another wave of it. And what I've been getting with you and with many people right now is that as the energies, as we're being connected to the higher levels and we're releasing things, we're experiencing a lot more. I'm seeing people experience a lot more physically. It's showing up in their body. And this is especially true with females because of the archetypal nature of the female body. Um, just as a quick digression, and that this ties to what is happening with you. In uh, any mythology or spiritual system where the female is the top goddess, her body is the universe. As a matter of fact, um, you could say the female, the, the universe or creation is somewhat female in nature. And so 
the female are the inner identity ties to um, to the universe, to creation, to um, manifestation. So what happens as things get released, that also shows up in their body because their body is an extension and a connection to the universe, archetypally speaking. Um, and so I'm seeing that a lot more with uh, just women in general, just people that I've that I know that are spiritual. They're seeing I'm seeing a lot more of it, and it's just to be aware of that, and not to be alarmed, um, and to be concerned about it. It's just it's part of the process. Yes, you are moving on. I want to answer your question. You are moving on, and you're getting closer. There is more to to happen. Partially, because what's happening too, as your higher connections, just like everyone else, is being made as your awareness is extending out into your being in all directions, um, you're integrating those new connections and skills that are associated with it. And because of that, it's, I won't say lengthening the process, but it's enhancing and expanding the process of things that are happening with you. And this is a good thing, but it also sometimes um, pushes outward to those things that, were, that would have otherwise happened sooner. So did I answer your question? If, well, go ahead and ask, ask some more, and we'll, we'll, we'll go some more on this. Go ahead. So, so did you say that there's still a whole nother layer left? It's part of the same layer. Okay. It's part of the same one. And it was a bit more compressed than I think I was aware of. And that can happen too when, when things start coming out. It just, there's a, you know, it was kind of pushed down and as it un, un, un the pressure comes off, it's like a mattress that expands and, and, and then it is released. But you are going through the process and it's still part of, I'm gonna say the same layer, I'm gonna just call it that. Because it's, although it's kind of, it's like that double uh, wave of energy coming in, that's all part of the same wave, but you could kind of see it as two parts of the same wave. Similarly, that's how your stuff's coming up. It's all part of that same layer, but it's different, I'm gonna say segments of the same layer. Um, but it's a good thing that it's happening and you have waited so long for this to happen. All I can say is be patient. <laughs> and and mm -hmm. we can talk more about, the, I think the answer is yes to your email, but we'll, I'll respond on that. I just have gotten to that um, and I think Something, some more things are going to happen then. Okay. Right. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. All right. Who wants to be next? I can go to Kathy. You, you look like you've been waiting patiently. You're looking for your button, the unmute. Yep. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so good to see everybody and hear everybody. Oh, it um, is. We got Dan on a different computer. That's what we were kind of delayed trying to get that going. So it's kind of fun. It um, is. And I like this. When I saw two Kathy's, I was wondering, but after I saw Dan's face, I knew what it was. And now I have to figure out how to put his name on it and our new name. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Some people here don't know about that, possibly. Oh, well, yeah. Anyway. I think everybody here does. Well, Matthew um, doesn't, but that's Except for right. maybe Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have two questions, if that's okay. Yes. Um, one, one is kind of to the group and the other one is for you, Jeff. Um, we had talked once before about like an eye phenomenon where it kind of is getting blurry. Mm -hmm. Like when you wake up in the morning and you're sleepy and you have the matter in your eye and then you clear it and it's fine. So I'm having a lot of episodes of that. And we had talked about that once before and I can't remember what you kind of talked about with that. Okay, so that's question one. Yep. Okay, I'm going to talk about this in a couple of ways. We had a session with someone recently, and <clears throat> they're having identically the same problem. And it had to do with, with her, and this ties to you to some degree as well, is there's part of the stuff coming up, our old patterns of what we didn't want to see in other lives. We just didn't let ourselves see. And then, and again, the, with females, everything, man, oh, hope, hopefully I'm not hitting the microphone there. <laughs> everything manifests the physical that you're seeing some of that. Some of that, ha that's exactly what that has to do with. And I think that's what we talked about before. There's some other part of it that's veiled from my awareness 
and they're keeping it, your high self is keeping it from me. And I'm going to respect that boundary. And I think it's for you to become aware of here very shortly. Okay. Just like, um, possibly not wanting to look at something going on right now, then probably, you know, that's what I figured out the macular degeneration that I have is all about is because I've not wanted to look at what's coming up, which is what yeah. we're in now. <laughs> and excitingly, and I want to share with you, yes. this is coming from your high self, the divine and, and, and some of your guides, you're now ready to look at it. Yes. You, yes. And you know that. I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. You already mm -hmm. know that. And I'm excited because I think this can help you heal some things. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Jeff. I was just trying to remember what that was all about. The eye yep. thing. Um, so okay. my second question yeah. is actually for the group, mm -hmm. if that's okay. Um, and I was just curious to know what strategies everybody's using to, to keep themselves grounded right now. Um, just out of curiosity to see, see what we're all doing. Um, going to town for me is really extremely challenging again. Um, and so I'm just, I'm just curious to know what everybody's kind of doing. Well, I'm just let just someone, whoever wants to jump in first, if you have something that works for you, it's always good to hear from others to say what, what others are doing, what everyone else is doing. Yeah, that's why I asked. Go ahead, anyone would like to jump in? Can I just jump in here? Sure, please. Okay. Um, every morning I've been doing the um, Donna Eden's five minute <laughs> energy routine. Oh, and, perfect. And, okay. And it's, it's really fast and it's easy. Mm -hmm. and she, also, she also mentions that if you uh, rub the bottom of your foot with a spoon that isn't silver, it has to be stainless steel, something like that. And I experiment every once in a while with my crystal to see if it works and it works. Oh, um, cool. It's very, it's very simple and um, I like it because it is simple. That is cool. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. I okay, appreciate that. Yeah. So I'll jump in real quick. So I have started doing a, besides being outside a lot and, and barefoot on the ground. Yeah. I've that's started what I've doing been doing. A, yep. A universal heart with Mother Gaia oh. sending love every day. And okay. I go from my heart to the universal heart that Mother Gaia holds and send love with no attachment, just merely the love. And that keeps me fairly grounded also. Mm. And so you're sending it to Mother Gaia's heart? Is that what you said? The universal heart that Mother universal Gaia heart. holds for the earth itself. And I'm just sending that uh, love energy straight through the universal heart for the world. Thank without you. Without an attachment of any of how it lands. So. Hope that Perfect. helps. Yes, thank, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Paula. That's exactly what I'm doing, too, every day, twice a day. And mine is a channeled thing that came through months ago. But when, when Paula was talking about it, going, oh, wow, this is so cool. You know, we're, we're all doing some of the same things. And I, too, have been, like today, I was what I call, I was focused because I had to be. But I was uh, uh, pretty un ungrounded in some ways, like there was a lot going on above my third eye. And then I could also feel the solar plexus and I felt like very uh, kind of agitated. Mm -hmm. And then the, the lion's gate is coming on Sunday. Yeah. And so my question was in, um, in knowing what a big deal that is and how our DNA, it is going to be shifting and the soul paths activated mm. uh, and all, a lot of things. I wondered if Jeff, what he was getting on that. Oh, and as far as the grounding, I've also been doing what, what Jeff has taught us and Deborah over and over again, that we all know so well from doing it at the end of our meditations and mm -hmm. so forth. I've been doing that as well. So, um, I'll, I'll cut out now because this is Kath, still Kathy's. Okay. All right, I'm going to answer your question more generically. And this is one of those things that I'm aware of uh, as far as the DNA because of a past life where I was part of working with mankind's DNA and it's a story for another time. Uh, anyway, um, one of the things that happens with DNA is that it gets activated. We've got, the, we've got obviously the strands that, that are there. But there's just different, the other aspects of it, and I call them Easter eggs, and they're good Easter eggs. And they have to do with when 
we individually or our soul group hits a certain energetic state, certain strands and certain aspects of the DNA get activated. So as these new waves of energy come in, as we flow with it, on a personal level, our energy, our DNA can activate and show up and start unfolding in our life. And it can also happen with the soul group. So when the soul group's energy hits a certain state, then things happen with the masses. When we do it individually, it happens individually. When it happens with enough individuals, then it shifts into the masses. And part of what's happening with a lot of these different DNA activations is that very thing. So it's just to be aware of what aspect is happening with, you know, with, with what you're talking about, Pat, as well as there's other ones coming up and there've been other ones in the past and it's going to be an ongoing thing um, with our DNA as it activates. And some of it, it, it will be, I think will be eventually seen in the analysis of the DNA itself. A lot of it has to do with the energetic aspects of the DNA. I've become very aware of this that gets activated and, and and it's not something you can look at under a microscope by any means, but it is indeed happening. And it's happening individually as well as within our soul group. So Sunday would be pretty powerful then being that there are a lot of us that are aware of this Christed light that's going to be uh, coming, working with all of us, coming into all of us on that day. So if there's many thousands of people across the globe and we're all doing this um, that day, then that makes a lot of sense what you're saying that goes along with it as well. Yes, and it's also an individual choice. I'm going to call it, and they're not, I'm not calling it this, I need to rephrase that. They are calling it an initiation, they being that in the aspects of the divine and, and the beings that are associated with this activation, that we have to not only be, it's coming in, but we have to accept it and be part of it and flow with it, just like with the energies that are pouring upon the earth. It's the same thing. But as we do that and we accept it, connect with it, and I say activate it, allow it to be activated, then it shows up in our life. And of course, enough of us, it shows up into the soul group. So it's a big deal. Thank you, Jeff. That's really awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that, Pat. As, as we're working on these different, um, uh, what did you call them? Not platforms, but uh, all these different areas on a daily basis. Um, so then was that why I was feeling the way I was feeling today with above the third eye and my solar plexus um, and probably other people here too? Yes, and for some other things that are happening with you concurrently right now that your high self doesn't really want me to talk about. It's just okay. more personal in nature. It's not bad. It's just personal in nature. Okay, thank you. Maybe we can have that discussion another day. Yes. Yes, that'd be fine. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Franny, you have been waiting patiently. Do you have anything to share or anything you'd like to ask or both? I can't hear you. Can you turn on your... Can you... Uh... There you go. I want to respond to Kathy's question about the grounding. Um, I've got a thing that I do that is kind of a spin-off from the exercise that you and Deborah have taught us where, you know, we're pulling the light down from the center of the universe and then up from the earth and um, vice versa. And I, if I could do this, I take my hands and I'm moving the energy like this. Mm -hmm. And for some reason that really, really helps me. Um, so that's one thing I do. There's another Qigong exercise that um, it's called breathing the universe. Mm -hmm. And you start out with your elbows at your side um, and your hands here. Mm -hmm. And then the elbows go out and then they come back in. And so you're inhaling and then you're exhaling. And um, the idea is that we're always in a state of either expansion or contraction. And this is the rhythm of the universe. And so if we can sync ourselves with the rhythm of the universe, then we are going to be pretty grounded. So. Wow. It's kind of like a breathing ohm. Yeah, it is. It is. What a beautiful what just, way to yeah. say that. Yeah, yeah. it seemed to be. I just, Thank I, you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Franny. And 
Thank you. The others that have shared too. Thank you. And I, I keeps coming the through. Question. I, I'm sorry, just uh, Dr. McKimmy keeps jumping in here and I just, he's done it three or four times and I, he wants me to remind everyone something he, he's told many people over the years and many of you already know it, is that to go barefoot outside uh, in the dirt, someplace, you know, damp dirt's better than, than drier dirt and just be out there to 10 to 15 minutes a day. Um, and that will help you ground in, in a very big way. Um, he was a very big proponent and he did it with Deborah at one point when she was having some physical issues and it really helped a lot. Um, and that was like 20 years ago. That's uh, probably the main thing I've been using is that sitting under the trees. So yes, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I've got two questions for okay. you. Um, one is that, uh, <clears throat> I've just been really, really tired. Um, and I don't know what that's about. I did go on a wonderful vacation for a week and I was with um, an aunt, an elderly aunt and my cousins and I had a wonderful time. I slept well every night and I felt great there. So mm -hmm. I wasn't, um, I felt great, but I didn't have like what I would call my old energy. Like I just didn't have an abundance of energy. And, um, but one day when I came back and I was sitting back and in, in the place where I do prayer and meditation, mm -hmm. I had sort of a little, a little burst of energy and, um, it was creative energy. And, um, in terms of my mind and, uh, um, some things that I want to manifest. And I thought to myself, Oh, wow, my energy is coming back. So I had that window of real creative energy, but it was just like a, um, a small portion of the day. And now that I'm back at work, I'm pretty darn tired again. Um, I really enjoy my work. Um, I just had an annual review and I didn't know what to expect, but the folks that I work with and for are, are actually more appreciative and more delighted with my work than I realized. So um, that was nice to hear. And they're offering some incentives to kind of keep me around. So um, I like that. And yet I also, they recognize that I have the hardest case load, the heaviest case load of anybody in the, in the company. Um, and so they, they want, they want me to stick around. They don't want me to have a heavy, um, a, a case load that's burdensome or, or exhausting. They want me to have um, work that um, feels good to me and that I can do in a sustainable way. So I know that I've got some old beliefs about like working hard and almost um, kind of like a martyr complex. You know, I, I spent many years going to Catholic school and, you know, the Catholics think that you have to suffer in order to be close to God. So um, I don't, want to suffer. <laughs> I've spent my time suffering. So anyway, my, my question is, can you comment a little bit on, you know, why am I so tired? <laughs> why am I so tired? <sighs> and am I going to get my energy back? Okay. I can answer the answer. First, I'm going to answer your second question first. Yes, you're going to eventually get your energy back. I say eventually because you're in a process and it ties to the process that we uh, we talked a number of things, but it's part of a, one of our last phone conversations we had. Part of it you already know. It's because of the amount of, um, I say, threads of activity and energy you have to expend to do the things you do because you care and you're committed with your heart with what you do. You, it, it's clear that that you, you know, this is this is more than just an uh, a, a parochial job for you. This is this is an expression of who you are. At the same time, and this is an abbreviated answer. I want you to know that they 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 being your high self and guides want you to know that. You are moving into a, into a period of expansion. I think we talked about that it has to do with the question. And you're moving upwards. You're integrating a, along with all the energies coming in. In your own life, you're connecting upwards and making new connections. And you're now getting grounded and, and your inner being is becoming familiar with them and how to use them. They're extended skills, extended awarenesses, all kinds of wonderful things. At the same time, which ties to your Catholic school comments, you're letting things go and fall away as this connection and integrating process happens and it happens with everyone. Usually when it happens more slowly, we flow with it and it doesn't 
affect us as much. But when we have a lot of connection to inter and, and releasing happening, there's this huge integration process and it takes energy and it leaves us at a lower ebb, if you will, of just ongoing energy. It's not that there's anything wrong. It's just that that's just part of the process. And that is a process you're in plus uh, your level of commitment with what's going on. And part of what your high self and the divine have for you, and especially the divine mother, is to take care of yourself, to do what you can do, but let go of, continue to let go of some things. And I think you're already aware that you need to do that. Don't try to make it go any faster. Just be aware of that when the opportunity inwardly and outwardly comes up for you to be able to let go of something that you know that you're being guided to do so, let it go. Things will take care of themselves. And, um, and that's what they want you to know, that you're best when you are focused on the, the, you know, that Stephen Covey thing, keeping the main thing, the main thing, which they're yeah. usually they're reminding me of quite often nowadays. So, mm -hmm. so did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Yeah. That's, yes. that's the big thing that's happening with you. And it's a pretty big thing with you right now. And it's been kind of happening before. And it happened this little, actually, you know, expansion, upwards and I'm just kind of using it graphic, you know, visually. And now you've moved into it really expanded because you were ready for it. And this, and this has happened, was happening during the time of our last conversation here, whatever was it, a few weeks ago, and it's happened even more now. And that's part of this great expansion that's happening. And with it again, um, is all the stuff being let go. Part of you is holding on to it and you're aware of that, but just continue to let it go. Let this integration happen. And as you do, the main stuff will remain and your energy levels will go back up again. Great. Right. Right. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you. That's wonderful. Jeff, I have one comment from John on the smoke that also is another aspect for Franny and everybody on the call. <laughs> the, the smoke um, is definitely affecting our energy. Sure. And most people that we're talking to are saying that at, the more they're out in the smoke, like whether they're gardening or whatever, um, the energy levels are really being low. And uh, I'll just jump in with a quick question that probably everybody's asking anyway. What part is this smoke playing in all we have been discussing tonight and in our everyday energetics? Thank you. You're welcome. I'll wait for someone else to answer that. There is an answer. We, I think we've talked about it before, but if anyone has some thoughts on that, please, if you have a short feedback for Pat, that would be wonderful. Um, I was just gonna add what we kind of talked about the other day, Jeff. And for me, I see the smoke as a veil. Yeah. Um, and they think the smoke is veiling what they're doing but I believe it's spirit that's actually veiling what spirit is doing so that they don't know what's going to happen next. And that's kind of my nutshell for how I'm seeing the smoke. Okay, thank you. And I can add some more to that. I can validate what you said. Yes. There's also the flip side of the coin on that. It also represents just the state of where things are with many people out there, the haze. But the other part of it is the veil because the they, oh, let's use that. And with that's the soul group. Let's call that the soul group's baggage. That it's consciousness, the dark, it's darkness that wants to, to find this, go uh, to oppose the light. The light is already winning. Uh, Deborah calls this their Hail Mary. And I think that's a kind of a good term because they think it's working, but it's not. Um, but what we have to do and what, and, and we talked about in the beginning, which is, is that, and most of us are being very much guided to stay connected and following our guidance and not getting in or in involved with the, uh, these other energies that are out there that are not part of what we're to be doing. But you're right. It is a veil that keeps, it's metaphorical of a veil. That's the other side of a coin. You could say an aspect of it that they don't know what's going on. They think they do, but they don't. It keeps them from seeing it. And it's, it's interesting because this has like been the second wave that I've been at one more than that. But let's just say the second one that, we, that I've been talking about where I've watched the they, the, the, you say the soul group negative consciousness that's fighting the, the light, wanting to oppose it, yet it just keeps getting dissolved. 
it just keeps mm-hmm. getting dissolved and and they're not aware of it and so that's i guess the smoke probably has many facets to it and that i i just see it as the light the light always wins we just have to know that it does and just to flow with that and not get let ourselves get caught into the lower cycle, the negative cycles, as Joseph Campbell calls it, of, of fear and, and doubt. So is that the, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Matthew. Yeah, Matt, I was gonna just go to you because you've been so patiently waiting. <laughs> no, hello everybody, my, my cell connection or uh, the internet might be a little spotty here. I'm dialed in from a very beautiful uh, food co-op near Quellum Bay. Uh, oh, so hello sure. everybody. Yes. <laughs> and what, wait, what's that? Sorry, Jeff. I just said I'm Thank jealous. You. Oh, yes. It's, it's really beautiful. It's so nice to be close to the, the ocean and the water and everything. And what mm-hmm. we have to, um, with the smoke is another perspective might also be, I know having spent some time with indigenous communities, there's a lot of um, honoring with the smoke and smudging and saging and, and that the, the smoke can help to move energies and um, blockages and disperse that. So maybe as the smoke is drifting through the mountains and the cities and stuff, maybe there's also a cleansing that's occurring at the same time, perhaps. I don't know. It just kind of came to mind. I'm glad you shared that. And I'm going to talk about it. That's a Buddhist, that's an actual Buddhist belief as well. Uh, when I was stationed in Japan, and I can, I want to affirm that. I, I said double side of the coin. I want to, let's use the, the, there's many facets. I think I said that as well. That's probably more accurate. And when I was up in Japan, you'll see them, at least back then, they probably have rules against it now, but they would have these barrels with, and they would get things in their special woods. And I don't even know. I know there wasn't just trash in there. There was things in there that were specifically designed to be burnt. And people would come who were sick or otherwise physically sick or emotionally, um, feeling emotionally down or whatever it might be. And they would take the barrel, the smoke would be coming up and they would take the smoke and bring it into them. It's kind of a smudging and, and the smoke would take away the sickness. It would bring it and take it away so they could be healed. So I want to affirm what you're saying that I think that's probably, that is definitely a facet of it as well. The universe is so wonderful. It can do multiple things at once with the same, same thing. So. Yeah, that's quite incredible. It's uh, two sides to every coin. Ex- exactly. That's a beautiful description. Yeah, did you have any other thoughts or any questions? Uh, to kind of go back on Kathy's question on the grounding. So I've got an update on my grounding. So you might remember those from, uh, what was it, a month ago on the last phone call. Um, I felt guided to walk barefooted on that labyrinth that I singed my poor feet in my over exuberance to really ground on that hot sunny day on the, the little stone. So my, heat have, my feet have healed, you'll be happy to know. Yes, and I've still been... <laughs> trying to walk every day barefoot which has just been great and going as often as I can into streams barefoot and just really just connecting doing some qigong right in the stream um, and then the other thing I've been doing is um, for my storage unit I, I pulled out my grounding pad mm-hmm. and uh, sleeping on a grounding pad and just you can either plug it into your ground in, in your electrical outlet or plug it directly into the ground and um, I must say, uh, and I've been meditating every day, so I don't know if it's the combination of the grounding or the meditating and everything else, but the sleep's really improved, the dreams are improving, and uh, so that might be something else to, to ground even more. You can ground while you sleep. <laughs> yes, and I think about getting one of those, and, and I have a question for you. I think it's more of a um, rhetorical question. Are you doing, continuing to do work with Native peoples and spiritual work? Yeah, it's a good question. I still have some context. I'm actually thinking about what I'm going to do in the probably in about a month or two. And and I may end up going up to Alaska. Um, there's been some interesting synchronicities guiding me up there. So I might do some work up there for a couple of months. But uh, um, yeah, uh, still still got some connections with some friends in that regard too, um, here in the Northwest. Okay, well, this is from your high self as well as an aspect of the universe. And I'm not precisely sure which aspect this is. You probably will be able to identify it in time. It seems to be important that you continue doing the grounding, but especially the walking on the earth grounding for your, uh, and I'm going to say your first person's, your um, native spiritual work and and, um, that sort of thing. Um, I, I feel like there's an ongoing connection. If it's not happening now, it soon will be. And, it's, and what you're doing is very important to continue. 
Nice. I got goosebumps as you were saying that. So that's, that's, that's good feedback. I will keep walking uh, barefooted and, and really it's the other thing that's been interesting in this um, to really ground this is probably more information than people want to kind of hear, but I'll, I'll go ahead and share. Um, it's got a propane um, cabin, but the, the propane water heater is not working. So I've got a little solar water shower mm -hmm. and that is really interesting. I've never really done that before. I've just taken a shower on the grass. And I've been doing that last three days and that's been really grounding as well. I've, I've enjoyed that. I can imagine. Well, thank you. It's, it's fascinating. You, um, the movie you brought us, you know, we talked about it and it's still out there on the website with like, the linkings to it uh, about grounding. That is, that is so awesome. So thank you. And thank you, Matthew. I just wanted to say thanks for those really awesome ideas. I think walking in the creek for me would be a great idea. Thank you. And the creek would really like it too. <laughs> oh, the consciousness of the creek really wants you to do that, Kathy. Yeah, I think I, as soon as he said that, I thought, oh, yeah, that's what I need to do. So thank you for that one. All right. And I'll add maybe just ever briefly, when I was over in Germany visiting wellness centers, uh, mm -hmm. we visit Father Knipe's Wellness Center. And he was, um, gosh, kind of an early, you know, pioneer in naturopathy. And he's got, he and other folks in Germany have created these barefoot walking paths <laughs> where just over there and they've got all this different terrain and some of it's walking through the stream, some of it's walking through mud, some of it's on pebbles and there are even sharp little bits of, of stuff. And they believe that that's really good. And uh, for traditional Chinese medicine, they would say that there's all these acupressure, acupuncture points on the bottom of the feet. So if you can walk barefoot through the woods, um, that could be really good for the grounding too. It does for all those points. And that's one of the things that whenever, um, one of the first things to do when, they, when they ha we do energetic sessions is those points are immediately reset to what, what, what I call the light body template. But anyway, they're reset to be so that they're flowing properly because so many people are inhibited because those things are constricted. So that in your grounding chakra that's beneath your feet also gets opened up as we walk on the earth. Um, which brings me to, um, I, I'd like to, if I can, jump in with Marcy, who's also been patiently waiting if she wants to share anything. Marcy is one of those people, I'm just, I'm just going to take the liberty of saying it. Her grounding chakra is routinely set perfectly because she does so much barefoot walking or walking with sandals. It's like, I'm, you are the, the walking, talking example of how to keep your grounding chakra just well, just wide open as it's supposed to be so that all the energies can just flow on down and, and keep us all energetically and physically healthy. So do you have anything, Marcy, to share or to ask? Well, you know, I think everybody has just about covered everything I had pretty much. Um, the grounding thing, yeah, for me, um, water really amps it up big mm -hmm. time. And not just walking on the dirt, but um, digging, actually digging. You don't even have to be digging for a reason. And even digging with your hands, I mean, if you really, if you really need that connection, there's like little microbes and stuff that come out when you physically get your hands on it and get your feet on it. And, and when you dig, you're getting in different layers. And I don't know. Um, the thing that Pat was talking about was the energy coming in, like that kind of um, disruptive energy today and the whole third eye thing. Mm -hmm. I'm experiencing that too. It's been going on since last night. Um, so I don't know, you know, I never know if it's specific or group or whatever. It's just what is, but um, it's pretty, it's pretty strong. It's pretty strong, whatever it is. And it is part of the group as well as for you, but also because, and I, and I can't overemphasize this, uh, Hawaii, you have that Elohim energy coming in. You have that creative ener archetypal energy coming in. And as that creative energy connects with each of us, it spawns that whatever aspects of the creative essence that we are connected to, it manifests in our being and in our life. And that's... Um, been a real wonderful thing about it's just one of the wonderful things that's happened since you've been in Hawaii it's just it's allowed for things to happen in a way that I don't know 
would have happened as quickly um, or in some cases in the same way uh, as they did had you not gone there. Yeah. Well, I, the one thing that's a little bit, and I, I keep getting put back to um, when, I'm not cert when I'm not certain, I'll keep hearing um, stay formless, stay formless. But when you say creative, I'll feel like, oh, I'd love to plant this tree here and, uh, you know, and this one right here. And then, you know, I'll hear um, the logistics of it in my mind, you know, we've got to do this first, this first, this first. And then it'll be like, no, you're going back into thought again, just stay formless. And so it's kind of a weird deal because it's like, uh, you know, I know we're operating on different levels and there is still a form. So, you know, it's, there's still the feeling to do something, but there's so much of it just kind of pulling into the being that it's almost like not to be distracted. Well, creation doesn't have to be with form. Creation is creation in all aspects of it. Formlessness, form. Um, I talk about that a little bit in the book about the realm of formlessness, which is incredibly, once we connect with it and we're ready to connect with it, wow, it's incredibly powerful because all of our beings have a connection in the realm of formlessness uh, beyond all forms and beyond all structures. It's just, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, creation exists there as well. So it doesn't have to be manifestation into the physical. And that's probably the part of the low self wanting to do that. And, you know, we, we can get caught up in that, but it can be in, in any, it's creation in any aspect, uh, in any, I say form, but it's even in formlessness, the creation can manifest. Can you, can you give me an example? Um, yes, I can, as a matter of fact. My friend, who much of the book that I wrote about is based on, uh, she was my platinum mind. I'm going to say it's beyond a gold mine. She was a platinum mind of, of just, she left her being open so that I could see things. And one of the things I noticed with her was that whenever I was around her, there was this strange energy. And, it, and I, I'm able to perceive energy both with form and with formlessness. And when energy comes through that's in form, it'll interact with us aspects of our being with people and sometimes with the objects in the room because of the energetic nature of the universe. And then she had this stuff that was just formlessness. It was just there and it would go into our being and enter connect with my, the formlessness within my being and grow me in that formlessness. And then that would unfold into the realms of form as well from being, you know, our doing, uh, if we think of our being as being formlessness, then our doing can, as things unfold from our being into doing, it can move into the realm of forms and, and form, forms and structures and, and outer manifestation. And I would notice that that energy would come in, manifest into my being, and then uh, grow me in that, in, in that which you can't even describe because it's formless. It just, there's no way to even talk about it. Yet it would also then, uh, like say manifest, but unfold into the realms of formless, into the realms of form in new ways. And, and then I would grow and, and it would move into new aspects of my being, new things that I didn't even know about. Um, it was one of the ways that I would became aware of how to go very incredibly high without the limitations of, you know, where we get stuck, we can only go to a certain frequency. Well, there's ways of going well beyond that. And um, and you do it through the realm of formlessness. And it's a form of creation, but not in the way we think about it. And certainly not in any way we can talk about it. So that's the example I can give you. But unfortunately, words um, are limited in this case. There's just no way to talk about it, yet it happens. And I saw it happen with yeah. her. She was my example. Okay. I have, I have a sense of what you're saying. So and it would be, it, it's almost like the kind of thing, it doesn't go through the mind, so that's why you can't talk about it. Yes, and it doesn't go through our being in the structures of form, so we can't even, our, and to some degree, we can't intuit even about it. it. It's beyond our normal intuitive nature. But one of the things, if for those who have the book, and if you have it, and, and someone doesn't, you can go ahead and share it. Um, I talk about that in one of them in the chapters and you can find your own way of doing it. When you move into the realm of formlessness, 
that opens you up to having receiving those energies and that those creative energies can manifest there. But again, and you're actually doing this, Marcy, I want you to know that that is indeed happening with you and it happens with all of us. But when we start actively, when we're ready to say, with our intention, move into formlessness, then all kinds of other things happen as well. And it sounds like this, you're ready um, for that. Go ahead. How does this, how does this, how does this, um, how does awakening um, or full, fully abiding um, this doesn't play any part of that. This is, this is like, um, they don't, they're not like um, in, in necessarily inclusive of the other one. The one can exist without the other. I'm going to say yes. I think in the way you mean it, yes. Because it, it happens, it looks like it's independent, but it's not. But, but it doesn't have the normal because our mind can't process it, doesn't have the normal linkages that we think about it. But it exists within all of us, and we all, our beings exist and dwell and grow, if you will, in the realm of formlessness. And it's a huge part of our being. That, you know, when you talk about the void, the, the, the divide, you know, the, the, um, the silence, we talk sometimes that the, the um, divine silence, the silence of God, when uh -huh. we move into the silence, the uh -huh. formlessness, can be there as well. Okay. Especially when we move deeply into it, we, we really move into it and we don't even, we know something happened, but we don't know what it is and we can't, and oftentimes our, can't bring it back with us because our mind cannot touch it. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers the question, but it's one of those things, it's, it's one of those things that we can experience and once we've experienced it, it's like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, and, in, and I think you're there. Um, but it, I, again, it's not something that we can, um, we can point to, but we can't talk about it. It's like what Joseph Campbell talked about. The best things cannot be talked about because they're beyond words. They're beyond our mind. They're beyond anything that can touch it. The best that we have is the second best things that we talk about, which is poetry, the spiritual works, art that point toward the transcendent, that which is beyond our knowing, and then moving into formlessness, which is even beyond, um, sometimes beyond that in, in a way. So okay. we're talking about nebulous stuff that's really challenging to quantify in any meaningful way, yet within our being, we can, ex I say, experience it, but. It, it is part of who we are and it's part of what's happening with you. Mm -hmm. I hope that helps. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. You, you left me speechless. So two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to, just so you know, your high self in the feminine divine, because it's sometimes it's just the divine without feminine or masculine, but the feminine divine um, has just communicated that you're going. This is you're now ready for more of that, growing mm -hmm. in the formlessness. In fact, I'm okay. I'm betting that that is. I'm going to say her way of saying it is, and I can confirm it. It's happening. I, this may not, I don't know how to describe it um, because of uh, my interactions in formlessness. I'm able to see it without, it's a metaphorical thing, and I'm being shown it metaphorically that that is indeed happening with you. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, thank you, Jeff. You're welcome, thank you. and thank you. And thank you for being... I mean, you are kind of the, you are the role model of gro keeping grounded. I just, of all the people I've ever <laughs> known, you do it most often, all the time. It's just, I wish, I'm envious. I wish I could be doing it because I wear my shoes so much because I have arch support. And when I go barefoot, sometimes it doesn't, it's kind of doesn't work out so well for me. So, all right. Well, it, does, 
Don't right. tell anybody, but I've been known to eat dirt, so. <laughs> See, but now you shared it with everyone, so now they know. <laughs> Actually, I think that's a good thing for you, though. Um, probably. I won't, I won't ever confess that I said that, even though you have it on record. Uh, uh, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. And Dan, you have waited so patiently. Do you have anything to share or anything to ask or both? Yeah, yeah. and uh, as you guys all know. Oh. We're getting some feedback there. I think we're probably getting it from Kathy. Yeah, sorry we had an echo. All right. Um, as you all know, we're kind of changing a, a bunch of things um, in our lives. and. Um, the last three months we've changed so much, um, you know, uh, physically and, and uh, 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 energetically and stuff that uh, we're, we're now, you know, that cause and effect where if you push on something, it pushes back. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I'm feeling right now is all the stuff that we've changed is kind of, um, <clears throat> Uh, I would be smothered if we weren't riding the crest of the wave, like you said earlier, um, because um, I, I'm really feeling uh, the things that have, that, that we've changed, you know, it's coming back to us. And um, I just spent last week doing something that I haven't done for uh, a year and a half, um, and it was working with Lenny, and I I just realized how uh how much my life has um progressed beyond what i have done even just a year and a half ago and um so anyway i'm um, like franny i i just can't get my energy um uh you know it's like i'm i'm pulled in multiple dimensions you know because we change so many things it's like all of them are starting to show up but at the same time um so to speak and um so i don't know how to phrase a question i mean that's how far out i am um just any thoughts on the waves that are coming back um of uh, you know cause and effect causality um any thoughts on that yes as a matter of fact something i i kind of saw before but i didn't see it as clearly as i have just now and they just showed it to me they being um the universe divine and interestingly your low self um which doesn't always happen isn't a good thing with the low self sometimes the low self a lot of times people we we think of it the, the low self embodies some of the subconscious things and the and the and some of the older patterns but it also in its pure state just is it's itself and it is our child self and it it had it is its nature and um and we need that to be functional so that we can be whole people with that said, I can affirm that you are expanding into these other dimensions and growth and energies. And I was going to, boy, as you were talking, I got, boy, you have really moved on since you've worked with Lenny before. And that's a good thing. And what your low self and your middle self want you to know, and I'm, I want you to know, this is, um, it's a great thing. It's an awesome thing, but it's also something that may cause you some uh, challenges is I'm saw all these different aspects of you that you're used to working with energetically within your mental body, your emotional body, and the causal body, and a few others that you're used to using these little tools, energetic tools that you use to process ideas and thoughts, and you put it out there, and then it comes back and it interacts with itself. These boxes are on their way out in a big way, a bunch of them, I'm sure one, two, a dozen more, and that's just symbolically. But these are all different areas. These are mechanisms of your being that have served their purpose in the past and even in past lives and earlier, even very recently and still usable now, but they, and that's your low self, including your inner middle self, that's part of your conscious self that we use, but that's your inner aspect of your middle self, as well as your higher guidance and guides, and I mean the whole entourage, want you to know that these things are on their way out. They're going to help you as you transition to the new mechanisms, whatever they are, they're going to be higher and they tie to this, these new energies that are echoing out and coming out and manifesting in 
to replace these. But as with anything, you know, it's like when we remodel, it's kind of a little bit of a hassle as we're doing it because we got to move the furniture out to paint the wall and then we got to move the furniture back in to, you know, to go live and then we got to move it back out again to put the carpet in, whatever else. You're going to be going through some of that with your being. And, and it's okay. going to be in a real way with the parts of your psyche, let's say, your spiritual as well as your cognitive normal brain psyche. Um, you're going to notice it. Be not dismayed. It's, a, it's, it's part of this wonderful process you're in. Just flow with it as best you can. And when the bumps in the road inevitably come, just, you know, let them flow, let them flow away and, and they will. So, but they want you to know that. Um, and again, the they is your low self, your inner middle self, the universe. And the, I want to say the entourage because I'm looking at at least a dozen of your guides and some of them I haven't seen before um, are communicating as a group that this is what's happening. And they want you to know it. It's kind of, this is actually kind of, this is a big thing for you. This is a me, <laughs> one of those things that only happens every so often in our life or sometimes lifetimes. And when we're ready to shift on, this is kind of like moving from, well, I'm done with high school. Now I'm moving into you know, the high school library. Now I'm moving into the college library. And this is a lot more books in the college library and they're different books. So we got to let go of the old books so we can have the new books. And that's what you're doing. The new books, the new mechanisms, both are true metaphors and they're actually very actively how you do things. If there's anyone who engages the, uh, the different aspects of your being, you are one who does that. And <laughs> that's why it's going to be more noticeable to you than it would be perhaps for someone else. So, this yeah. is a great thing. Just um, flow with the remodeling. Yeah, right on. <laughs> I, I just feel so. I feel so far off course that I know I'm on the right path. You know, the um, that I, I don't want to be on a course. I want to be surprised. So, well, um, surprises are coming. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and they're good surprises, even though sometimes they may not quite feel that way. You know. Yeah. And I'm just so happy that the 20th is coming up because uh, I'm, I'm not missing this one. <laughs> uh, your your uh, Friday. Yes, meditation. and we just finished the meditation. They told me to finish it early. And whenever that happens, wow. I always wonder why when they never usually tell me. It's just one of those things I have to do it to find out why. And now I know why. So, and so I'm, I'm doing a teaser. I am. So... It just if you can't make it in person, uh, which we hope you can, it'll be posted. Hopefully, remind myself to make sure I post it um, on the 20th so that if you can't be there in, in person, uh, it, it will be there later that evening. All right. Well, thank you all. Is there anyone else have any thoughts or any other questions before we kind of wrap this up? I just have to say that I'm so grateful to be a part of, of you know the, the community there. Um, sometimes uh, up here I feel pretty isolated, especially since coming back and having been immersed there for two months. And I'm grateful uh, to be in touch with all of you today. Well, thank you, Susan. You're such a blessing to us. And just thank you. And your light is so needed. I know you, it's not the best place you want to be, but your light shines up there, and it really makes a difference up there in in Crow's Nest and just in that whole area. So. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. being you. And thank, thank you. all of you for being you. Yeah, it was so good to see all of you. Um, Susan, I haven't seen you for such a long time. It's just such a blessing to see you. Yes, and um, yeah. all of you just to be part of this group. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone you else? I just want to say to you what a blessing you are. And that we get to do this, what I call advanced work together on these Fridays that you present this. And everybody, get, we all get to grow singularly and together as a group. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Pat. And just as a reminder, when we all come together, even it doesn't matter whether we're far apart, our energies come together and it truly is multiplicative. It's syn you know, synergistic. And you know, Susan's energy adds to Kathy's, to Paula's, to Matthew's, to, 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 to Dan's and Susan's and Pat's and, and Marcy's and everybody. 
and we grow in ways we don't even know until later. I, I just, it, you're right. It's such a blessing to be together. So thank you for the, for the, for the, uh, for the blessing, but my heart and, and my life is blessed by knowing all of you. So with that, blessings and light and love to all of you. And until the meditation or until next month, whichever comes first for you, <laughs> we'll see you then. Blessings Thanks. and light. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.